Hello, everybody. We left off here, and now it's time for hair. Uh, hair is uh, definitely the most obnoxious thing to create in Blender, because Blender is terrible at hair. Uh, every other 3D toolkit has something that gives you a grip on hair, and Blender, no luck, is just shit all the way down. Uh, it does have a nice uh, particle system if you want to use that, but you can't put that into Unity. That's like an in-Blender render thing. So we're going to be creating our haircut uh, using a very straightforward method of uh, frond application. And this is something that uh, is a very, very typical method of doing things. And if you watch some tutorials on YouTube, this is more or less what you're going to see. However, most of the tutorials you'll find are for super, super short hair. And we're actually doing a kind of fluffy, long, longer hair. So we're going to be creating uh, a slightly different shape for our frond. Yep. So as uh, as you might be aware, the idea is that we're going to be building our hair out of a bunch of nearly identical frond-like uh, objects. And this is pretty much the shape that people will suggest you use when you are first getting started. Uh, however, we are doing a specific kind of hair which has a longer frame. So we're, we're not doing super short hair. We're doing nice long hair. So we're going to be uh, scaling this up and then adding in another slice and then moving this up and moving this up. And this is going to be the basic shape of our hair. So we're going to go and scale these out. Oh. Uh, I do I have the I've been doing that without screencast keys on I'm sorry about that uh, the idea is we're now just trying to scale out this so we have a nice uh, kind of bowed shape and that should work but none of our hair is going to be flat this is not super hair this is not super short hair uh, this is a decent enough shape for our hair to be uh, it's obviously much too large so let's go ahead and scale it down something like this. Now we want to UV map it now. UV mapping it later will be a real pain in the ass. So just uh, switch over into UV mode so you can see it. There it is. And then unwrap it. And that'll work fine. I generally like my tips pointed down, so I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees. There we go. And all of our fronds will start off with this UV map, and that'll work just fine. So save your game, and I'll try and save it as a new version rather than saving over your existing version. And then you can just start to apply this stuff to the hair using Shift-D to duplicate it as necessary. Apply this stuff to the head, rather. Um, the, uh, the difference between applying these as individuals and duplicating the mesh uh, is definitely there, but it's not as important as you might think. Most of our editing is going to be here in the mesh edit mode. So as you might remember, this is the haircut we're going for. It's just a big feathery mess. Uh, there's no particular worries about uh, a particular style. It just all goes kind of in the direction it needs to go. So what we're going to start off doing is... Oh, I'm sorry. Stuck there. Okay, what we're going to start off doing is uh, rotating and bringing it in and we're going to build the top of the head first in this kind of third person for third person fantasy game you're gonna end up looking at the top of your head we're gonna be looking at the character from this angle a whole lot and therefore this is the angle that has to look best and it's also I find easiest to put the outer layer on first and then put on the lower inner layers uh, that's up to you though I, I I think that a lot of people probably find that it's not not that that's not true, but it's you know it's how I find it to be easiest and your own workflow might be different. So I'm using grab and then I'm just uh, using the basic uh, G tool. I'm not uh, trying to to do it on a specific um, axis or anything. and that lets me use the camera orientation to do this best. And so what I'm gonna do is uh, her hair is actually floofier than this, so. I'm going to bring it up a little bit to give us a nice floofy haircut. And then I'm going to just duplicate this and start to spread it around. Oh, no, uh, what did I just do? Shift D. There we are. 
And if we spread it around, you can see how I've got it set up so that the last selected vertex is where we rotate around. I find that that's actually best. I won't always know which vertex uh, is going to be the last one we selected, but I will know that... Oh, that's not right. I thought it was the last selected vertex. Huh. Interesting. Apparently, last selected vertex does not keep up with it when you move the mesh. Well, whatever. Uh, all we need to do is create ourselves a variety of... Uh, overlapping elements here. The idea being that we don't want to ever see the skull or the scalp. So here we've just built ourselves a very simple kind of palm tree of a hair, and I'm going to rotate around like this, move it forward, and uh, we more or less have the top of the head as we would like it. Now in honesty, we would like the top of the head to be further back than that. Uh, her hair does not get combed forward from, uh, from the center of the top of her head. Her hair really gets combed forward from back here. So we're going to place this palm tree in, uh, in the middle of where I think her hair would spread from, and I think that that's probably here. So when we are looking at this from above, that is going to be pretty much dead center of the camera. So we're probably going to want to add some more stuff there to make it look a little bit more interesting. And also, these are all the same... Uh, these, these are all the exact same size and shape. What we're going to do is we're going to actually... Uh, duplicate one of these and then we're going to punch it out to a new object and the reason for that is because we're going to want to edit these using some sculpt brushes later and it's a little bit easier if the various sub pieces are different objects so in this case what we're doing is we are just creating some um, uh, some fronds that are going to be short like this oh actually uh, you want to make sure to cut off the blunt end. And the reason for that is because otherwise you'll be cutting off the end that is designated as having um, uh, transparency. The tips of these are going to have transparencies, but if you cut off the tip you're going to have to re-UV map it. So let's go ahead and make this a little bit thinner by scaling it up on the z-axis. There we go. and we don't actually want it to fire straight up like this. Uh, we would be a little bit happier if these covered our weak spots and that would be the seams in these pieces. Let's go ahead and bring this more in line with what I hope. There we go. And then we can duplicate it. Now don't feel shy about altering the shape of these, but also don't feel that you have to, because we're going to be bringing a sculpt brush to these, and uh, that, will shape, that will reshape them a lot more than whatever you're doing here. You just need to make sure that they're in roughly the right position, really. There we are. That's more or less correct. So now we have this kind of fan of hair coming off the top of her head. And all we really need to do now is fill in the rest of her head. And I'd like to say that that's going to be straightforward, but you can see we've already been at this for 10 minutes and we've only just gotten started. Hair is always going to be uh, an obnoxiously long effort, and there's really nothing we can do about that. Um, what we can do is try and make it uh, as as manageable as possible and that does involve 
separating out these pieces. There we are. Uh, into different units so that we can handle them later. So I'm just going to keep adding hair, and that's the end of this episode, but I'll try and publish the next episode you know, right after this one uh, so that we can get a better feel for uh, how that all works. Um, this episode doesn't really stand on its own. You definitely need to see the rest of the process, and that will probably involve another episode. So that's what I'll be doing next.